All right, guys, welcome Risen Esports. Welcome all supports and gentlemen. Here I am, Joshua Nezra Freeman, joined by my co-host, Owen Rosen Boshart. I think I butchered it. I don't know. I'm sorry. How That's are fine. you doing today? Good. How are you doing, man? I am not bad. Just waiting for teams to get ready and get into lobby. But I am so excited to get into Rampage, our quote-unquote cl clown fiesta. <laughs> teams are going to change team names, but for right now, they are RAR or Daycare. I'm not sure, but this is Daycare versus 7K. For the meantime, they're going to be RAR because they changed three times in the past five minutes. I'm going to shoot us off and get us right into drafts. Here we go. Already on 7K side, we have Misfortune Band and Sedwani with the return of Malzahar being banned on the side of Daycare. Yeah, really, really strong. 7K taking out Misfortune. Obviously, really strong right now. Lethality, Meteor, really strong. AD carry right now, very oppressive. And Sejuani, just a great tank jungler, has been for the past couple months or so. Just really strong tank-wise with their passive, really good engage with their ult. Malzahar also being a really strong pick right now. Jarvan being banned out as well by Daycare, so Jarvan ban like Sejuani, really oppressive. And the Blitz Frank as well, which is kind of shame to see. I really wanted someone to pull out those new skins, but <clears throat> oh well. True. Anyone with a slow seems to be super oppressive with Comet because it's just pretty much impossible to dodge if you don't have a dash or whatnot. Once yep. someone opponent you, to the slow. Yep, you get hit by an ability with the slow and you get hit by that Comet damage as well. All right, and it's so fun because we, I personally don't know any of these people. These people are all new to me and new to the Rampage scene. So it's going to be really fun to see what the picks are. And we have a first pick, Shen, coming out. I'm not sure if that was a miss ban or what do we got? Um, uh, They're talking about it in the chat right now. Not sure what the verdict is. <laughs> all right, sucks to beat them. Well, it's just a misband on a daycare side while they pick up the Ezreal, and... Sure, we'll see that. But Ezreal just being so strong with the Kleptomancy, introducing the element of RNG into our bot lane, where we could get two pots, a ward, or, you know, a couple stacks of 100 gold. Just uh, yeah. boost up your early laning phase, it's just really ridiculous. Yeah, Same. especially with Ezreal early, if you get that 100 gold, if you get a couple bags of that, uh, you can get your back and pick up your tier uh, and sheen a lot faster, get that power spike going for you if you're in the uh, AD carry role. Zack being picked up as well by the side of Daycare. Haven't seen a whole lot of Zack recently, not sure how he stands on the jungle tier list. I know just any jungler right now that can take um, the... Uh, what's the keystone? Um, uh, the one that every tank picks, the damage, the one that does damage after a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Shock. The but after shock, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Zach just being so prominent doesn't matter how much we actually nerf him. The reliable CC he offers in such long range, he can just be behind the vision line, coming from awkward angles, ganking you from true. the Raptors and just jumping. True. And Very applying true. Applying all that. Almost point and click CC with the Q. I mean, if you really want, just Q a minion and then auto attack the other person so you don't actually miss it. Shen being an interesting first pick priority for me, just... I haven't seen him been, like, overly useful. Like, he's not S-tier pick at all. Yeah, he's not super strong. Um, right, a lot of people right now are saying Shen, Orn, obviously, is very powerful. Um and Maokai are the quote-unquote top top laners right now. Um, Shen, I haven't seen as much, like you said, but I know Orn and Maokai are both very oppressive. Surprised we haven't seen an Orn pick or ban coming out from either side here yet. Um, maybe the other team owns them. Not sure. All right, it looks like the team has decided, since that was a misplay on the side of Daycare or RAR, uh, as far as the ban goes, in the they're going to let the time run out and 7k is going to drop a ban at, in respect instead of just going through remakes. So that seems interesting play, but whatever. The Galio ban I feel questionable at least because it's not, again, not as strong and 
Especially if you don't really see him coming into the mid lane at all, because top lane's already picked. And that would leave Zaya as pretty much your only damage threat. Yeah, but they do both. They still have the jungler and the AD carry. Not jungler and AD carry, jungler and mid laner to pick from. And uh, you can pick some high damage junglers right now, are very, very strong, especially with. Uh, with electrocute you can get and dust blade uh, like uh, does that mean this is a yeah. list support possibly uh, uh not the support i feel like it's pretty oppressive you have thresh's hook but not this hook feels way worse than anything thresh yeah. puts out especially with just the point and click ultimate mm -hmm. and zaya at least has the ultimate to get away but i don't feel like that's wrong in a very safe uh, blind mid pick coming with the Oriana for Julian here. Yeah, Oriana's really good mid pick right now. With summon Airy, getting the damage off, uh, getting the Airy proc on that, and also with your shield plus team fights kind of around the mid game are very prominent. Uh, and her ult mm -hmm. is just such a game changer. And like you said, very safe blind pick. Another aggressive jungler comes out with Elise coming out from Mario Nuke 1. Uh, Elise is someone I haven't seen in competitive of any sort at, at all, besides, you know, Dylan bossing us here. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> it's literally the only time I've seen Elise ever. That's going to be interesting to see if he can actually press that early advantage more than Zach can. Zach will feel a lot better, even if he doesn't get entirely all the early ganks he needs, but if Elise doesn't get ahead in the early game, doesn't snowball someone, then she falls off a lot harder than Zach will. Very true. Very true. At least pretty much. I mean, anyway, at least just what I've seen. Not sure about the new runes. Uh, you just pretty much turn into a stun bot late game with Cocoon, uh, catching out carries, also being able to clear waves decent with your W plus a percent health damage on her Q. But uh, very, I think pretty good draft from both sides here. The only thing that's kind of a little bit weird is the Nautilus support, but um, if they can make it work, then. Go ahead. I mean, it work. <clears throat> oh, that's just macros. He's fine. But the only real gank uh, she can make solidly is if Shen up top lands that taunt, will make the top lane much more oppressive. Very as, true. As well, we still have like the last pick on for day side is just Ari, which is all right. I haven't seen her as well, aside from any other one trick we have roaming around with Ari. It can be oppressive, but again, has a steep fall off if you don't get those early kills. And it's actually against a relatively safer Oriana. If Ari wants to dash into it, she can get shockwaved immediately. Yeah, true. Yeah, the Ari, I haven't really seen a whole lot of Ari recently. Um, I don't, not that I don't really pay attention to mid mid lane tier list right now um but i know oriana malzahar got banned out but um oriana malzahar's zoe has been really popular right now with um to with which, how people are still trying to figure out how to play around her to which i'm relatively surprised she made it through pick and bans just completely unnoticed yeah zoe and zoe and orn both went through um without being picked or banned uh, not sure if it's just because neither team is comfortable playing them, neither team owns them, um, but hey, they picked what they wanted. I guess so, but I feel like Orink would have done a lot better than Shen up in the top lane, and or Jace for that matter. I feel like I get some PTSD with the NA Jaces that go around. We can mm -hmm. stomp our early game, but we have nothing to do for you in a team fight in the second half of the game. If we are killing you with our uh, shockwave? Not shockwave. That's it. His Q? Whatever. If we aren't uh, killing you with blast. that... Shock blast. Thank you. There we go. If we aren't killing him with that, at least half health, then Jason really has no use after 30 minutes? 20? 25 minutes? <clears throat> yeah, you need to be able to be poking people out, chunking people. Jace is really strong with lethality too right now. Not sure if uh, people have... Uh, still build just sh right away lethality on them or if they go kind of the man immune tier build into lethality like people go on Varus um, I, I think it's still up in the air or it's personal preference 
Um, but yeah, Jace, Jace I know is really strong right now as well. Is a top lane pick. Not sure about in this league, but I do see it a lot in um, kind of the higher-ish Elas. Ever since the first emergence of Lethality of any sort, Jace has never gone back to the tier. As far as I've seen, it's always been Lethality, regardless if it's good or bad, this has just been better than a tier. Yep. Yeah, only... I do. I, I think people have yeah gone away from the tier, but the only adaption to that I've seen is going to play the Rune King into uh, Black Cleaver, but still you just sack mm -hmm. Lethality after that point. Yeah. Looks like um, let's see. I really favor the bot lane as far as uh, our early aggression is going to go. <clears throat> Nautilus hooks follow with the CC of his just auto attack. It's just so oppressive. As if Zai can't actually ult anything or dodge anything, then the poke coming out from Ezreal after that point, which is speed too much, especially with the Kleptomancy, especially if we can get some good drops from it. True. I, I like how I think bot the bot lane yeah, whichever bot lane plays well, because if, if Zaya gets ahead, um, she I think she has a lot of protection on 7K's side with the Shen ult, the Shen taunt, the Thresh, the Orianna shield uh, to be able to... Not that she really needs peel off of her, but uh, if she can... <laughs> Every if, ADC needs if she peel can, off her. If she has a little bit of a front line in the Shen and the Thresh to just be able to go at it um, and keep the the Jace from poking her out and the Zac from just jumping straight into the back line. Um, because right now it looks like Daycare, whatever they want their team name to be, has <laughs> a, lot, a little bit better of a dive comp per se because if Nautilus finds a target to pick... They can poke down with the Jace Shock Blast um, and the, throwing out the Ezreal poke. And then if somebody gets low, all Nautilus needs is a good hook or an ulti or Zac to jump in. And they have a lot of strong engage with that. But <laughs> I, I, like, I like 7K's team comp a little bit better. It's a little more well-rounded in my opinion. But I, I think whichever team uh, is going to execute their play style better um is obviously gonna win and that's how it should be <laughs> i would i agree on 7k having a more rounded and easier to accomplish comp if it wasn't for the elise the elise kind of throws it off and makes it a i need to snowball this lane or die mm -hmm. kind of situation true if she doesn't get one of her lines ahead, and she needs to get the Orianna ahead, because after, once the Nautilus starts roaming, she is a sitting duck to any ultimate he has to throw it. If he shows up in lane, that's almost a guaranteed flash coming out from uh, Orianna. Yeah. As far as, yeah. as far as Elise being, Elise and Thresh kind of being the only engages, because we can have uh, the Elise just repels down into the Shen ultimate. But as far as that, there's no one with a solid engage. You got Thresh to try to pick someone, uh, hook someone off, and just catch on a misstep. But just no engage is really coming out from the side of 7k while we have an abundancy off of daycare. True. But I mean, you you can have engage is powerful, um, but. If your if your engage is sloppy or not executed well as a team, a better disengage um, is gonna win the fight. If Seven K is able to pull that off, like a really good Shen taunt into um, his W, or getting a good Thresh flay on somebody that tries to engage, or you're just shock waving everybody together as Oriana um, for a Zaya rip, but. Uh, if yeah, daycare really has to play their engages correctly and executed as a team, um, or else Seven K may just be able to disengage out of it, and then once everybody's grouped up, then re-engage with their type of CC. Agree, but uh, I guess I want to pay, place more reliability into the junglers from both teams because. You have Daycare who has three carries of their own. You have the Ezreal, mm -hmm. the Ari, and the Jace who Correct. 
Uh, Zach can choose any one of these lanes to try influence and press their lead in game one. Well, we have Orianna and Zaya in the bot lane. And if one false uh, move goes down for Orianna, she's, uh, her build's delayed about 10 minutes, <laughs> five to 10 minutes, depending on the gank in the mid lane. Yeah. Especially against an Ari who, once she gets a tiny, once she gets an issue, she'll be able to just take a mile from you. For which Orianna doesn't actually, she's safe, but if, she missed up. She's going to step back a lot harder than she will. Yeah. But we have actually Julian t opting to take in the cleanse on Orianna just to nullify any of those charms coming out. Well, Ari classically takes the ignite. And as yeah, we Ari over, taking the ignite. Yeah, as we went over, the bands were a misstep by Daycare on one side, and then the respect no ban coming out from the side of 7k so they just decided to go along with it and they were fine about it good good sports yeah. i appreciate their sports minister in our opening of our rampage risen esports winter split let's see we can't actually see any keystones yet but if i had a gamble i would say <laughs> zach has smite and teleport so he might have an unbound spellbook because it seems a bit of an odd combination if you aren't going to take Flash with them, but with the elastic slingshot, you might be able to get away with it. Barely. Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, he. I don't. I don't know why you would take the spellbook over aftershock, especially on Zach. Especially on a Zach. Who, <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. And Spectre Delay is getting over just now, and we're about to start loading into game. Oh boy, let's finally actually see some of these uh, runes, keystones, which I still want to call them masteries, but whatever, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I still I still think of them more as masteries more than runes, honestly, but masteries just mashed up all together. And we yeah, have... it, it just feels more like the mastery tree than a rune page. Oh yeah, and we have Zaya coming with the fleet pooper, getting that buff. Uh, this last patch, I believe, uh, now scaling uh, off crit chance as well to yep. actually feels a lot better into the early mini game and still falls off pretty a little hard at the late, but it should help that early lane for her against an Ezreal Kleptomancy while Ari still has the execute, not too bad, and Zag does have the unbound spell book. Feels a little yep, weird, but you go you. Jace also opting into the elect uh, Electrocute. Interesting pick on the Jace. Uh, I'm not sure if more people go Electrocute or Summon Airy on Jace. I'd, I've seen a lot of people go Airy just because of the poke, um, but I feel like Electrocute would work fine as well, especially with the subsequent trees in the um, that tree over the Sorcery. Yeah, definitely. And Shen taking Grass to the end grasp which is you know not a shocker i feel like with that without summon airy he's be able to sustain a lot more once he gets a bit more tankier jace might mm -hmm. not be able to do a thing to him once he gets into that dodge zone gets a bit tank on him the electric just might not be enough to actually do anything because it feels really lackluster against like what we came to know as thunderlords by the end mm -hmm. of it and this feels like it's baby version and i don't think it's ever going to grow up yeah especially the uh Especially with the electrocute, and then also um, the phase rush over Storm Raiders. I feel phase rush was such a downgrade from Storm Raiders Surge. Uh, it just doesn't feel optimal for maybe one or two champions anymore. Like, period. And looks like we're now loading into game, waiting for our spectator climb to catch up. We'll actually be able to get into here. All right, guys, welcome to the league. All right, on our red side, we have Aerogen. Uh, Aerogen, yeah, and Doki in the jungle, Squishy Fishy. In our mid, we have the one true god in the bot lane, Artemis in the support. For 7k, we have... Pika Richan in the top lane, Mario Nuke in the jungle, Jillian mid lane, Netflix, and Chill 
as ADC and Steely Dan as our support. Oh, but we already have a five man waiting in the top side of uh, Daycare's jungle here. Yeah, very Looking. aggressive start coming out from them. Very aggressive. Hopefully, we get some early warding at least uh, try mapping out the jungle, but they're all in it and they're kind of spread out at this point. So, if Jace runs into the wrong place, he's just going to catch one person out and not actually be able to collapse. No one actually be able to collapse on Aragon here. <laughs> Zach has TP because he wants to, and that's fine. That's fine. He has an unbound spellbook, and they get some early vision, but other than that, no actually fruit buried from that uh, hole. As, oh, come on, Trum. What do we have? We have a blue side star coming up for Artemis, or Doki, rather. My bad. As well as yeah, just a red star standard from starts. Standard starts in the jungle. Jace did spot them top lane. He did see the Thresh going into the tri bush, so they did know that they were kind of up there placing wards. So he, the the uh, red team is aware that they do have wards in the top side jungle of theirs. And with the extended leashes that we're having to give him, especially from the roam, coming down from the bot lane side of seven k, both sides. Oh. Uh, far gone, some experience and some CS, both coming back to almost having just the casters left alive, getting one melee each. No game audio, what? That was just really low, guys. Sorry about that. Well, thank you, Kingsland, for that detail. I'm happy that we have game audio now. Hopefully. All right, we have some Flay coming in the bot lane. Early level two, going to press that aggression. Well, we have Nautilus, still only level one, who can't actually return anything just yet. William Trains gets the exo uh, execute up in the top lane, but they're trying to do what well, we have. A game coming out from Mario Nuke. Cool. Not going to land the Kahoot, only going to hit a minion. We have an Aragorn trying to, go to get back. On the side, will a taunt actually be able to come out in time? No, only going to try to get a slow way. We have the coming in as a questionable just to deter the side of 7k. Good early roam coming out for Mario Nuke, but no fruit just yet. Yeah, really interesting. He decided to use his cocoon right away. I would have held it a little bit longer, waited for Jace to run past the minion wave, or and then try to cocoon him. But they, no summoners were blown. Just both junglers showed top, kind of standard right now. A lot of people just do a lot of jungle. We have the just taunt actually out there and passing the lane. At least stayed there for the lane. Going to try to get some damage off and might actually get a first blood. No, a flash away from. And Elise gets the first blood up in the top lane. <laughs> Bait as baited. Ika just baited the hell out of Aragon here. Mario Nuke still waiting in that brush, not suspecting it, not actually keeping track of where that jungler should be. Yeah, that was very. Uh very cheeky play coming out and it worked out for them at least picking up an early kill you know hopefully be able to snowball that into uh into it's a goal really lead for them squishy fish takes about half her life for it all right we have some play but we have a hook coming in from artemis you're gonna have to burn the heal to get steely dan away just the pope able to come out from the one one true god here is just a lot more than Netflix and Chill's petition out. <laughs> Still sniping Silly Dan with those cues. Yeah, just kind of standard balling, playing it out. Not not really a whole lot of engage. Don't know if they really want a 2v2. Each team is kind of trying to feel their 2v2 strength without a jungler present. Um, so they're just kind of playing it safe for the early lane phase. Yeah, and I feel like Nautilus is just a lot more... We'll put out a lot more damage to Thresh, especially in these 2v2 trades. Just him alone, and then we have one true god actually be able to put out. If you can dodge uh, Netflix and Chill's feathers with the blade collar, then she really doesn't have any damage in this early game. But we have a hook, land, Destin has landed him into the tower. He's going to take a couple shots, going to give away, but not actually getting the blade collar out in time to secure a root. Yeah. Also, interesting start from the Ezreal. Uh, started Spell Thief's Edge. 
not a Doran's item. So trying to get some of that poke golden. Did back and get the tier just now as well. I feel like that's super inefficient because it goes on cooldown the minute you get a cocoon. Way to make cocoon lands on his wishy pitchy and the shockwave going to knock him back in the lane. But has you golden going to get right back out? Not actually going to dive under the tower for that because you're only a level four at least. So Squishy Fishy gets away with just his ult and flash. Yeah, really well executed gank. Just didn't have enough damage on the side to secure a kill. Did get the flash and ult away from that Ari though, so should be a decent regank ability there from that Elise. And back to the spell things point, it goes on cooldown every moment you like every time you hit a minion, so it's not entirely effective unless you're really used to working around that, getting your poke in and then going for your farm. But it still goes on cooldown so you don't actually get too many procs from it. Yeah. You do uh -huh. you miss out on health and damage uh, from not starting a Doran's item as well. So he does have it. Doki sitting the top lane, like super stacked. getting up. Gonna get down, going to get the knock up, going to get some damage out, get on the throw of the dodge shield on Justin Cam, but he's actually gonna get the walk away, taunts right himself under tower. While we have still the dance down the turn, getting exhausted, going out the runaway with the flash coming out of nothing skill, securing the route onto Artemis, going to save Steely Dan's life. Yeah. Very good disengage on the sign of 7k there. This charm lands onto Julian here. Not having the ults up to secure the rest of the damage, just gonna take the trade. I would like to see Mario Nuke make another repeat gank to the mid lane. Now, in the last few seconds, that Squishy Fishy doesn't actually have her ult up and the flash is still down. So then that's no more mobility for the Ari. And it should be relatively easy with Mario Nuke still actually having his flash and just repel onto him, Cocoon, and that should be it. Ooh, gets charmed immediately from walking in. Vision in that jungle. Hook landing onto Steely Dan. Going to get some damage out, but Rooted is one true god. Going to shout, and the hook barely misses onto Artemis. Yeah, they. Jace also took the blue buff. Um, Jace and Zach roamed over and took blue buff, and they're going to try to gank top here. And Mario Nuke sitting down the bot lane, still level 5, and going to get the hook. That's that science onto Artemis. Pretty easy to hit Cocoon. Target that time. Going to actually get some dynamic control. Going to do the most damage can. Actually forces out the heal from one true god. That was a very good gank. Very low bot lane. If good CC combo. Just let the Zai get some free damage off. Alright, we're going to take that early aggression and push out that bot lane and actually going to go and secure ourselves the first Drake of the game coming in in about 9 minutes whenever they decide to finish that. Yeah, there we go. And that's an Infernal Drake. Such a great Drake to pick up 9 minutes in the game, get that stacking started early. Steely Jan finally finding that pink ward. But major CS discrepancy up in the top lane. Well, we have Aragon is a good 28 CS over Pika here, and it just feels pretty bad to be Shen at this point. Probably needs a little bit more love, but probably is okay. It's choking in some of that attention from yeah. Zach as well. As long as he gets his eye, oh, he, he can be is behind a little some bit. Early. Aggressive Shockwave coming in from the backside. They have nowhere to run. 3v2, where are you going to go, Nephilim? Still using the ult to dash away from the True Shot Barrage, but will it be enough? Still damage coming out in the CC is just too much. Aragon picking up a kill for himself. Yeah, Jace getting a kill there. Nautilus getting a kill as well. Um, pretty good for Jace. Very good room. They're able to get some damage on this bot tower here. If Jace, yeah, Jace is coming back down. Gonna put some damage on there as well. Ezreal the attack speed buff. <laughs> the double TP coming in clutch for this bot lane. You're not really expecting, especially if you start both the timers at about the same time. They're not exactly sure how many to expect, and they don't, especially don't expect to have Doki still having TP. Exactly. Just a good play coming out from uh, Daycare here. Destiny is landing on to Artemis up in the bot lane, but that's not really a place you want to be. Hook legging back onto Steely Dam. Go actually go down. We have Aragon taking a kill. We have Sandy not using on Netflix and chill. Actually getting the kill with the Blake Taller. Shock Blast going and taking a nice chunk out of him, but nothing else is going to come from that engage. 
<laughs> Steely Dan pressing a bit too far, trying to save a tower that 3v1 you shouldn't have any business being near. Takes the hook in respect to that. But good for Necklace and Chill actually scaring himself a kill on the back end of that. Getting him some gold back in his pocket to accommodate for all this kleptomancy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Trading towers, top for bot, but uh, daycare got a couple kills, three, three kills for one. No, they only got yeah. Well, the the kills that got that they TP down for, plus the first tower gold. So oh, we have yeah, that puts them in a Going to get the shock wave. Doki's up there for the gank as well. Going to get the knock up. Going to get the Q's land. CC was just going to throw him out. While well, we have exhaust landing on Squishy. Fishy in the back lane. Going to miss the flay, but the Destinus lands. Shockwave misses as well. We can't land a single skill shot under the tower. Charm going out. Squishy Fishy actually gives himself a kill on a Steely Dan. While well, we have Arian and then Doki in the top lane. Going to try to get some out, but let's bounce. is not going to really hit anyone. Mario Nuke able to banish it, but boom, he just gets deleted by Aragon in the shock blast. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of damage from the Jace there. He does have his full Yomus already, so a lot of lethality and just flat AD coming out. Squishy Fishy able to just outplay <laughs> Julian and Steely Dan under his tower, getting himself a nice one for nothing kill. Yeah, and very Jace nice dodging feeling... the Oriana. Jace is feeling pretty good right now, being 3-1, having a full Yomas completed, while we don't have any armor except for a cloth whatsoever. Jess is actually landing on a Squishy Fishy without any any damage coming out. Heal comes out, Exhaust comes out, and no one else actually gets on the Squishy Fishy, and just goes where he can, going to the flash up, going to the play kill, and going to, but that's your life for it. Well, we have Pika just throwing in the taunt in the back line, going to try to do what he can, while the only damage is Mario Nuke, and he's still trying to out of bed, but he's getting the kills. And we have another Death Center laying on the ground, but he's just throwing it back into our Mario Nuke. He's just so strong right now. He can't do anything while we have one true god just poking him down. No one's actually going to face him, but Doki's going to dash right back in. Going to throw down. Subdivision is popped. Will one true god be able to come back and save his life? No, he's going to stay there and possibly... No one's going to focus on him. Let's, let's just get out now. True Shop Raj is going to barely... Just barely clip Pika. Yeah, that turned out really well. Uh... Blue side there, they were able to get a pretty good trade. If Zaya wouldn't have altied and flashed in, I think they would have saved a lot more members of their team without dying, um, and be able to put out a lot more damage once the Shen actually got in there. But uh, it still ended up being a decent trade for each team. The gold lead is still sitting at about 1,000 um, for daycare. I'm not sure if the standing nine it was still up for Pika Richan, but I feel like if you were going to choose a moment, it was going to be the moment where Netflix and Chill decided to flash in suicidally into yeah. a one before throwing out the old, getting the blade collar, getting a kill, but it's just not enough to save his life. And especially the standing United, I feel, was the moment that could have turned the fight back for them. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually get a lot of damage back on Aragon here. Aerojen. I'm going to butcher his name all night. Alright, and we have some. We're just going to go try to split up the lane again. We're going to focus in our mid lane while we send Jace top, but under that tower, he's definitely losing some of the advantage there. Shen feeling a little better with a kill on his side. While we have Doki actually steals away the blue buff. Good smite coming out for him. Just here, but we have Pikachu getting the taunt onto Doki. But I'm not sure, but this is the 5v1. Doki's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Aragon almost picking off Netflix and Chill, but he's going to get away with his life. True Stop Barrage coming in is just going to be tickling. And now that we have 7k on the side, getting two down might actually go for the Rich Herald. Yeah, they're definitely setting up around it. Not sure if they're actually going to do it. Uh, no, they are. They're going to trade for Dragon. Um, which Dragon is it as well? It's an Infernal. So... They may just take this, and if I were them, I'd just go drop it straight mid and try to push with it as fast as you can if somebody picks it up. There we go. I feel like that's not entirely worth Yeah, you get the rip here, you're going to push a tower, but you could have had two Infernal Drakes for yourself, and now you just split the difference on them. Yeah. Between the team. Taunt actually going in, just going to get some damage, and Taunt's going to miss. 
Yeah, I've definitely. <laughs> I, I think I would have gone and contested for the uh, the infernal as well, but yeah, but we had one true on actually still being able to pick out a lot of poke on a Netflix and shield grind throughout the ultimate. What he can, Blake Lauder's just not actually called back yet. They're just being zoned out by the feathers. He's going to narrowly escape with his life, but true shot barrage is back up. Will he actually throw it out? I hope so. Please. Oh, it's going, but it's going to yeah, miss. Just clip a couple minions. <laughs> barely misses. We're able to watch onto this mini map. Well, this is an evasion by daycare into the jungle, but Death Sand is landing on Artemis. Cocoon landing as well. Can't miss that one. Just going to shield and walk away. And no elastic sleep shot coming out from Doki. I feel like Jay should be uh, pressuring the top lane and or the bot lane a bit more. He has TP up and should be able to do something while well. he has the split pushing power while he's 5 and 3 and has some 1v1 potentials against most the majority of the team. And I question Doki for still having TP. Deathlander just lands on to Squishy Fishy, going to throw out Shockwave play and Wall lands. Finally going to secure a kill on a Jillian, but the less bounce takes him right into the tower where they don't want to be. Sand United was used, but not enough to save the life. <laughs> yeah, very, very good pick from the Thresh there. Oriana damage coming out. Uh, they did trade Rift one for one being used there. Onto the mid lane, Death Sentence again landing on an Artemis. That isn't quite always the pick you want, but it's going to grab him every time. Tower going over in the side of 7k. True Shot Barrage coming out, but just going to try to get some damage on the hero before the next attack. Ojin pressing that top lane, but he's going to be backing now. I feel like he's making a decent, uh, made a decent push on the top wave, but now someone needs to rotate bottom and just keep splitting them out. Because I feel like no one can deal with him in a 1v1 sense on the side of. Hook lands on to Julian, but no one's actually gonna follow up with anything. Okay. Destiny is landing on Artemis again, but you got charmed right back at you, buddy. Netflix Chill is taking about half his health for that aggression from Steely Dan. Yeah, took the lantern in, got hit, and just instantly flashes out. <laughs> oh, the sure shockwave taking out half of Jillian's health. Jillian? It's a girl. Whatever. <laughs> Steely is on fire. I agree with these death sentences, but it's all on the wrong target. He has a thing. A hard on for Artemis. <laughs> just a portal comment all around. Yeah, Jace, like you were saying, Jace did hit that point where you just gotta poke and poke and poke with a shock blast now, being able to take out majority of people's health on the side of... He's got a dust blade, uh, but who lands on to Ar Aragon? But a level 9 against a level 11 Jace, I don't think you want to take that fight. Julian trying to get some poke down, trying to clear the wave as much as he can, but can't actually step up to that wave. Hook landing onto Netflix, Chill ultimately coming out, getting both the knockups. Aryan Char misses barely thanks to the ult coming out from Netflix and Chill. Let's balance takes him back as long with the cell division. We have one true god and Squish Fishy gonna flash out of the shockwave. Try to do what he can, but Zag goes down to Pika. It's all the death and lands onto Artemis again. You are just gonna land every hook onto him. <laughs> but no one else is going to be going down for the jelly one Q away. Wow, but Mario knew coming to take it back, but Julian now being targeted out by Aragon on the backside, and we we'll see if he can take the one three four fight for himself. I think he's just going to try to run away from this point. He's hiding, waiting for his team to <laughs> clash. He in. just wants to burst out on his summon while by the aggression coming out. Now still just gets deleted by Aragon. <laughs> just hop, hop, spin to win is the Aragon, because all I see him doing is flipping into the air. Pika able to sidestep Doki. Very nice to save his own life. <laughs> yeah, that was very interesting team fight there from both sides. It was looking really good for... Charm landing pick. onto Pika, but that's just going to be immediately deleted. And yeah. <laughs> now we go back to our favorite, uh, favorite Rampage style, which is Aram. We just said all people because we don't understand the concept of split pushing. Or Jay should almost be just there permanently. He has the dust blade, he has the Yomus. No one's going to contest him up there. Send a member to him every now and then. But the Shockwave just takes down to have his health and Hammer Q that finished off the job. Doki jumps onto Jillian, but just as a threat. 
Yeah, Doki's still holding on to that TP. We'll see if he ever switches it out. He has a spell book. I need to see that switch out for something. You're not even using flash, which is like everyone's biggest thing about the spell book is the flash cooldown. Yeah, especially on Zach, that's pretty pretty strong having that flash. But I don't know. He but I hope he's holding on to TP for a reason. And not it's twelve to not fourteen just... and a four K gold lead only at twenty one minutes for the side of daycare. And to do what he can, but the next Drake might. Nah, uh, spectator bug there. It's just another mound Drake coming out for them. <laughs> it seems like everyone has forgotten what other lanes look like, and we're just kind of, kind of five man against five man. Do what we can. While well, we have the purchase of Zizera coming out from Doki, going to press up the mid lane. Zizera doesn't have nearly as much range as it used to, so it's never going to reach that tower. At least I don't believe it will. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I think it'll stop pretty oh, much like Josh, right getting the knock up on the peek but it's gonna be first out, gonna get the less bounds, turning a peek up, but he's just gonna talk right back in. Just hit his lens onto the arrow again. What can he get burst out before he does all the damage to the team? Gonna try to do what he can, but exhaust gonna get on the squishy fishy. <laughs> Nevertheless, still just kiting out Artemis and the Sand United landing onto Mario Nuke. Not that it has to land anywhere, so click and play. Artemis getting thrown on the backside while we have Squishy, and one true god just had the flash away on the back of the end of that team fight. <laughs> that was a mess, but four for three coming out in favor of 7k. Yeah, uh, uh, Oriana had a very large shockwave that fight. Hit about three people, I'm pretty sure, with that. Uh, doing a lot of damage. Uh, still... <sighs> I don't know. That was an interesting, interesting fight. Um, nobody ended up taking the dragon, so it was just a bunch of kills. <laughs> Erga just TP's in two kills, Steely Dan. No remorse whatsoever. <laughs> just to say that last minute, you gotta actually try poking out this tower now. But not gonna get anything else. So that TP was literally just a trade for Steely Dan. <laughs> it feels pretty bad to be him. Hmm. Yeah, surprised uh, Steely Dan stayed there at when... <laughs> oh, he's now seen now, but Shockwave lands on Netflix shield. Three quarters of your health is now gone. He'll have to be used if he wants to engage in this fight. And we have Doki coming in for that and just gets clapped. Netflix on the backside just gets deleted. While we have the damage coming out, double kill coming out for Aragon. I think that's a Jace just going to be able to solo carry this game for them. Doki on the, throwing in an elastic slain shot. Not going to get anyone knocked up in this time, but the damage coming out... From Aragon, he's oh just a God. beast. 14 and 4. Nothing at this time is going to stop me. He's just going for all those kills. I don't need minions. I don't need side waves. I'm just going to kill all of your team. One by one. Knock up coming out onto but the less bounce is going to take him back on the side. And the last auto attack gets him. An unstoppable coming out from Aragon. <laughs> Steal yeah, again on the backside. Again, strong. you're just. What are you doing trying to defend a tower by yourself? You don't have a team, and especially you don't have anyone with any sort of damage besides your Zaya who can tickle just the front line. Yeah, that Jace is uh, really, really strong right now. You can just chunk out any carry that walks up next to him with his EQ. <laughs> like that. Uh, they're going to get the in him now. Both the rest of the outer towers are... Or at least the tier 2 towers for the other lanes are just tickles away from being destroyed. Baron is up as well. Let's see if they want to make a move for that, but if they can clear those towers, hit Baron, I don't think there's anything left that can stop them. It's really hard to face check a poke comp. And we have Aragon just waiting for someone else to step out of this brush. Ah, uh, feels so bad. Oh, Netflix still right on the docket. Aragon picks up a kill, Cocoon whiffs, and just gonna run away. <laughs> the two oh minute bait God. works out for this Jace. And he's just, you know, buying time. No one actually can really challenge him. Death Sand is going out, but it's gonna be sidesteps. While wow, we pick up a Mountain Drake in the favor of Daycare. <laughs> but again, we don't care where he should be is that top lane. Or at least someone else in the top lane to fish off that huge mini wave 7k has building up. And it's just being fed into a tower. Towers don't need gold, guys. 
Yeah. It's a lot of minions up there. Ezreal going true up. True Shot Barrage going to take out about half of them, but, you know, make an effort. Q actually landing on Cecilia Dan, going to throw those hooks right back at you. Mario Nuke is just a hair away from death. And with the Shockwave and hooks, everything's landing on your goal, but no damage is being done. It's just like nothing else I can do. Flash coming in, but I don't think that hook was meant for you. It's meant for Artemis, his one true rival. But it's going to result in Steely Dan's death. And we have finally Zach is being sent to the top lane using, not even using his TP, which you should use your spell for, for something there, buddy. I mean, you're 0 and 4. You want to be around the map to feed just a little faster, but come on, throw in a flash. <laughs> Anything else. Use the spell yeah, book. Yeah, he does he does still have the TP up there. Everyone <laughs> uh, mm. just throwing it to go try to get as much damage as he can down to the Pika, but it almost turns back on him. Mario Nuke not can uh not going in for the repel, not going in for the rest of the damage, so Aragon gets away. Yeah, Zach, yeah, Zach looks like he's the designated split pusher. Ooh, Mario Nuke's gonna charm up. Squishy Wishy, but actually just gonna repel away. Ult right back in the queue. True Shot Barrage snipes the kill. Scumbag one true god taking in all he can. 3 and 0 and 11 on this Ezreal, making himself some gold back. <laughs> Death Hand is lands back onto Doki. You're gonna try to steal away this blue buff, but there's just nothing you can do, Steely Dan. But now yeah, coming in with the play, on. going to try to go now. It's going to the last man. It's gonna take two away with him, all away from Jillian. But again, this is not really two, but the last man is gonna give the blast going, and he might actually just get away. Oh. <laughs> the great escape coming out from Doki for the win. That was pretty clean. Clear pink yeah. word on the way out. <laughs> nothing else you can do. They still have. The ZZ Rot sitting in the top bush there. It's just gonna run into at the least tower at this and point, take it. At least at this point, <laughs> it's close enough to take the tower. And good for the ZZ Rod to do it by himself. And I would Seven like to see. just left it. <laughs> I would like to see Daycare actually uh, pressure this Baron now. Go for it. Bait it out. Do what you can. You know they can't fight you. Not as well you have Jason in your lane with you, because God knows he isn't going to a side lane to push. Yeah, no, he's just stay with the team. Zach's a split pusher. Oh, they have two ZZ Rots <laughs> down now. <laughs> Another ZZ Rot. What is going on for them? Wait. Who, wait, who has the other... Wait, what's going on with the second ZZ Rot? Who has the... Is the spellbook actually reduced the cooldown of the ZZ Rot? Because, or is it from the, uh... Oh, is it from the one mastery open that gives you the, uh... Cooldown reduction? on items. It could be. Domination. Actually, that on such a huge cooldown right that on an activation, that actually seems intense. <laughs> but still, you, you had a good rune there, but please change your spellbook. Something yeah. else. It's a minor, and the less bound's gonna take Jillian away, but the death is gonna bring him right back on back. Shady Knight not gonna be enough to save his life. <laughs> Jen goes down the backside of that fight. Yeah, this this Zach is like, th he's in thirty seventeen, and we're in twenty seventeen with those. Oh, oh, it's not this is just going in. Netflix still finally using that stopwatch. Going to do what he can to try to get away. <laughs> stopwatch saving his life. Twenty nine minutes. Do you think there wasn't a moment you would like to save more before we're now? Just chunking out these turrets. I don't think there's anything else I can do against this just siege of ZZ Rods and the Ezreal. Plus the Jace, and just nothing else you can do, and it just... Now Flex and Jillian gets deleted! EQ Hammer is just too much. Steely Dan, once again, rival going down, finally, to Steely Dan. Screw himself killed. That's a win in my book for him. GG, game's over, maybe to the wrong side. Shockwave landing down onto one true god, but it's going to heal and walk away. With the last some guy's going to bounce right back in. Not going to get Steely Dan. The, fl the flay is going to miss, but it doesn't matter. Both towers are down, and that's going to be your next is going out. Nope, qu not quite yet. One, someone, go go back and finish it. <laughs> just, oh my goodness, Mario New gets just obliterated by Aragon. There's just no thing that can stop him. He just two shots everyone. Now, someone please attack the Nexus. Thank you. Game one, going over to daycare. Very dominating win on their side. Jace Pitt having 21 of the team's 29 kills. 
Uh, Jace, you were just magnificent. Even if you didn't always combo properly, you were still doing great. <laughs> oh, 21 and 4. Ending on that Jace with 208 farm at 30. 30 minutes, yeah. Uh, damage graph is actually broken for me, so I can see how much damage he did. But what a great performance. I don't think they will let him have it again, though. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Jace gets through this next pick ban, honestly. <laughs> yeah, Jace and... I mean, my only problem with that side was... Doki could have split push, Aragon could have split push. I mean, yes, it worked out, but in a team... I guess a team in an actual uh, macro setting, it would have failed. <laughs> if you couldn't get Aragon up that high. But... All for all, they couldn't respect the damage from Aragon, and that's just it. 7k goes down, loses the first game. I'll go ahead and correct that one for you guys there, so they can get a 1. <laughs> 1 Daycare and or RAR, whoever they want to be. I think they got rejected for RAR, though. Alright, guys. We're going to be right back with Game 2 after these brief messages. I don't think we have messages, so sit in relative music that was composed by us by Take 2.
All right, welcome back, Risen Esports, to Game 2 between 7K and Daycare. To our opener of our Rampage Winter Split, here we I am, Nesware still, and join with me is Rosin. I'm going to send us right over to Draft since they have started. Let's get back into it. And as no surprise whatsoever, there is a Jace ban from the side of 7K. Not going to see that again this split. They're still asking if one band's still missing, but I don't know why. They just missed it last time. Yeah. That's fine. We have the classic still Malzahar and J4 both being taken away by the side of Daycare and still not wanting to deal with that. But no one else, I guess, from their comp they just went against. They feel any fear whatsoever after the performance from last game. Yeah, Ezreal getting banned out as well. Ezreal getting banned out, not actually wanting to take against any of that poke. He was actually still rather prevalent in the bot lane, putting out a lot of the damage in the Kleptomancy, just allowing him to snowball way harder with the little gold lead he had after that point. And yes, I would like to acknowledge Drum in the audience. Thank you for supporting me. Love. It means so much to me. But, and we have another miss ban. Seems like both teams have agreed to drop a ban this game. I'm not sure why anymore. Oh, I... I guess they both have a sub, but either way. Yeah, I'll let them decide what they want to do. <laughs> as long as they decide it amongst themselves, if they're going to miss a ban, both ban, whatever. If they decide it amongst themselves, just I'll just let it be. And it's all right. We're just going to have to wait out the full timer, and we're going to see what Daycare wants to pick up as our first pick. Who do they give the most priority to? They no longer have the Ezreal, which is a smart move, but we still have Zoe, we still have... Uh, Orn is still available. And these yeah. like S-tier picks we've seen, being just monstrous and the representation of Satan in, in these games. Ooh. Just not Dillick, but we take MF instead. Which is interesting. 
And yeah. that still relies, still pretty prominent with that comment. And 7k, wanting to take up the Shen as well. So we're just going to run it back. The Shen, I guess they felt like it was their uh, key to winning. Not want to give that up. And I feel like you can let that drop down the priority list unless your top just can't really play anything else. You can probably let that drop down and then get some other key picks for yourself. But like we have the Nidalee here coming out from 7k. Wanting that aggressive jungler, want to actually try to make more uh, plays around the map than we could see from the Elise. And she'll have the faster clear than her, but if you don't have the mindset to go and make these early ganks, because mm -hmm. we had a couple and then they didn't turn out anything, so you just it seemed like uh, Mario just got completely dissuaded from trying to gank anything and just armed up. Yeah, Aurelia picked up on the side of daycare <laughs> to go against the Shen in the top lane. Um, huh. Not letting the Jace go through this time. Weird. I haven't seen Aurelia in quite a while, so this is going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least. I'm not quite sure who wins the Aurelia into Shen if Shen gets the uh, guard onto. Whenever Aurelia gets the engaged, then she really can't do anything from that point and just has to walk away from that. But once again, Nautilus being picked up the, or most likely the support. I don't see Nautilus jungle coming out anytime soon. <laughs> no, I not not I, never again. Let's not do that again. Especially after they picked it support last game and did fairly well with it, I think they're just going to keep it there again. All right, looks like Seven K is just running it back. We're going to ban out your entire team from last game. I feel like if Zach was such a prominent pick, they would have picked it up by now. You definitely could have left Aurelia down into the last pick. No one was going to pick that away from you. But it's nice we have Spellbook Zach is going to be out of the game because he never used a Spellbook. Ever. Yeah. Very interesting. I don't think they wanted to go against a double ZZ rod again, though. But... Yeah, let's but. see what the last ban is on the side of Daycare. At least some more aggressive support coming out from 7k. We have the Leona. And going to be a lot more aggressive, but still, I can guarantee you, I know where the Xenoblades is going, and it's right on to Artemis. His nemesis, this series, is just him. He, every death sentence landed onto him. He was the target, never got away. And finally, before the end of the game, he got his kill. And we have Boris also picked up. Which is alright. For an immobile ADC to go against Misfortune's bullet time, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Varus is another one of the very strong AD carries I've seen this patch. Varus and MF just both building lethality, both being able to just chunk people with Comet. Um, not sure into the Nautilus and Misfortune, but... Ooh, and we have Zed. We're going to spice this up real quick. Might actually have some carry potential from the mid lane this game. Well, we have the RH just returning back for the side of daycare. But the Amumu, who we can already predict, might have a spell book. Just saying. Yeah, Nidalee, the only magic damage coming over from the side of 7k right now. So, um, into two tanks on daycare side. Interesting, interesting that they could just stack armor. Uh, if Nidalee gets behind in the Varus and the Zed, possibly will just be useless. Quite possibly, but the Spears should still feel pretty good. The artillery show that they are. That the, they probably won't build much MR whatsoever, considering she is the only AP threat coming from the side of 7k, so the Spears should still be coming out pretty strong, especially with the removal of uh, MR per level runes, which were my mm -hmm. favorite. So those all AB champs get to feel their damage a lot more now. What I want to see is this Zed pop up on this Ari. Like, I just want to see the outplay and yep. call it a day. Because after that last game, after sitting on a passive Orianna, it's going to be a complete 180 in gameplay. That's what's going to have to happen can't just be passive on Zed and expect to win game. But your only 
Your only ultimate target really is the Varus. No, that's wrong. I'm looking at the same team. Why would he kill his own teammate? What's wrong with me? <laughs> okay, uh, the only the threat fortune. is misfortune. There we go. Just suicide and suicide attempts there. All right, waiting for him to go through the pick ban. Then we'll get into game and see which which team is actually going to come out ahead on this one. I don't know. Uh, Daycare coming out with a pretty strong team comp with one of the same picks. Two of the same picks. They, they had yes, Ari last time yeah, as well. Ari, not us. Yep. Uh, very strong looking team comp there. 7k. If they get ahead though with the Diddly Varus Zed, they might be they possibly could run away with it, but it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Nidalee does I feel like they have to get ahead in the jungle with that one. They're the Mario likes to play aggressive junglers, it seems like. Not really the tank tank jungle player like a lot of people of in this kind of league will gravitate towards um, but Nidalee and Elise being picked out both games so far on his end. I do like the Leona pick, though. I, I feel like Leona's very I like underrated. Leona. Leona's dispatch. really solid with the Aftershock, being able to reliably go in with the Xenoblade and getting the Q proc off with no sweat whatsoever. But I have a problem, I guess, more so with the Shen pick. It wasn't that yeah. prominent. It missed a lot of clutch stand United opportunities because the cooldown was up and just decided not to go with it in those uh, the few select team fights they really had. And it didn't yep. it didn't stop Lane either. He went half the CS essentially by ten minutes, by 10, 15 minutes after that point, and he just wasn't a threat, a prominent threat whatsoever. He had one stand United that successfully made his team stay alive and can tear into you a team fight. So I'd question the pick for coming out from Pika there. Not that I don't question Zed, I just don't have experience to say why it's already so bad. Yeah, I don't get to see a lot of Zed nowadays. Um, a lot of times he's just straight up banned or people are picking more of the AP carries currently. It's going to be interesting to see how he plays into the Ari. Is he going to dominate lane or is he just going to try to shove and roam and get some potential gank spot lane with the Nidalee and also the Stand United from the Shen? Possibility of a four man, if not five man gank bottom. So we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. As opposed to a daycare has such reliable engage coming out from the Aurelia, just dash right onto him. <laughs> stun him up with such ridiculous times. I hate going against Aurelia so much. And we have the Amumu, whose ultimate will just be game changing for these team fights when you all really have to rely on is dashing onto either the Zed or the Varus, and you pretty much secured yourself a team fight. And then allows anyone to follow up with the Nautilus hook. Ultimates just point and click. Or I can land a Q onto anyone from that point. And especially with the Wombo, just Amumu's ult and the bullet time from. Misfortune should be able to do decimate the team fight. Their team comp yeah. just seems a lot easier to pull off compared to what we have from 7k. Which 7k I feel like is more of solo queue, and I feel like Daycare is still solo queue mm -hmm. with the Aurelia, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. more but things yeah, fit the... together, at least. Yeah, Curse of the Sad bullet time from the Amumu Misfortune combo. Nautilus Misfortune also pretty pretty good combo i feel like for the misfortune having a support like nautilus who can constantly put some cc <laughs> down on the side um let misfortune get her full damage in whether it's auto attacking make it rain bullet time stuff like that just be able to get that damage in without having to worry about somebody jumping onto her because nautilus is going to be peeling them off as well as keeping everybody kind of slowed cc'd stuff like that so the bot lane bot lane combo <laughs> looks really good from daycare here with the nautilus misfortune now the only thing leona has over nautilus is that she can cross the mini wave with her cc 
just as he like mm-hmm. being able to catch on to the last champion and hits and be able to dash through him onto the misfortune and just bypass him completely while we have the piercing arrows coming out from Barris. Might be able to put down a bit more poke than Misfortune can. But if at any point they fall behind, and that's where Leona suffers the most, if she feels her engage can't, like, if she just feels she'll get blown up on the engage, she just can't do anything. Just sits behind the mini wave and waits. Mm-hmm. Get a relic proc here and there, but... Yeah, can't. they have to really be ahead and really be confident in the ability to go in and kill somebody because with Leona, once you go in, you're in. Like, you're you're right inside of them. Where Nautilus, you can kind of peel back a little bit, plus you have your actual health shield where Leona has a resistance shield. But uh, she has a lot harder time disengaging off of a fight they go in if it goes wrong than a Nautilus does, per se. I will say, though, <clears throat> as far as Steely Dan's concerned, I feel like he's going to have all the confidence in the world. At least he did that last game with all of the death sentences, standing up one before two of the team under these towers, mm-hmm. feeling like he could save the world if he just had a second more. Or imprison them all in his lantern, either way. Yeah, we'll see. It looks like Amumu did stick with the teleport <clears throat> and the smite, so he may be going that spellbook spell jungler. I don't see again. why, but... He didn't. It's not like he used it. We'll see. But, if, we'll see if he swaps for Flash. Because I mean, Flash is super good on a Mumu, even more than on a Zack. I mean, Zack can barely get away with not having the Flash. But a Mumu, you really want the Flash Ultimate if you miss yep. your Tangle. Like, something to rely upon. But I do predict another Double ZZ Rock coming out. Yeah, that I I would be very surprised if he doesn't double ZZ right again. That seemed like the strat he was going for. Bonking indeed. I don't know how to really take it, but Doki won last game, so it must he must have something to go with this. The double TP, hopefully they're gonna make another play in the bot lane with that and just snowball their lane completely. That's what they really need, getting a deep word into the back line there. Double TP at the same time, get that communication down, and no one knows how many people is coming. Or which one. Because you really don't expect a member to have TP. You will after last game, but <clears throat> still. It looks like we're just out of this delay now, hopefully. So we should be able to get in game and see which team is going to come out ahead. I still favor uh, Daycare at this point. Their team is just a lot easier. As I said, just a lot easier to actually secure and go down with. Yeah, I agree with you. Unless unless they just throw super hard in the early game um, and uh, 7K is able to get a lead in snowballing with that Elise and with the Zed, uh, I don't really see a way that... Yeah, uh, there's that... <laughs> There's the unbounced spell, but coming from a Mumu. I have a question, though, for at least the Nidalee. I don't entirely agree with Comet. I feel like Aerie yep. would have been a lot better with Nid, considering you have the damage poke as well as a heal. So Aerie actually benefits both ways, but... Yeah, I think Aerie or Electrocute is the way you want to go on Nidalee. It was just inefficient to go Comet, in my eyes. Your Q is not going to go to proc a slow, so... Question mark. While wow, we have Electrocute on the Zed with the Death Swarm, such a cool looking skin. I love it. But we also have Comet coming out for Varus, which is pretty much the standard at this point, since the Comet gets transferred over to AD and the Lethality just buffs it up. It works out really well there. While Misfortune, I believe, could have gone Comet, but chose to go with Aerie this time. <clears throat> the Make It Rain just procs Comet almost guaranteedly. Yeah. Yeah, interesting pick there. Um, I do, I do think that uh, Comet's a little bit better on Misfortune right now. Or at least that's what I've seen people take. But I don't know if they know something I don't. I mean, probably if we're gonna do it and run it back this game, we might know something you don't. True. <laughs> Very true. Uh, 
Alright, fast start. Looks like they're already peeing into the enemy side. Go ahead and get another bush bait. See if it goes well for them this time. As we did not find anyone last game at the start. <clears throat> oh, no, this already there waiting, expecting. Not going to see him just yet. I feel like a blind Xenoblade would have been really worth it there. <clears throat> I mean, he got nothing to lose, so... Just might be able to see someone in the bush. <laughs> Gonna walk it right back around the river. They know they're there now, but... And they're being separate. I'm gonna get a word out. Comet and the piercing yellow land. All planned. Just gonna get that chunk of damage rise and minion spawn and just gonna walk with it. That early word getting its worth. <laughs> yeah, I just. It really bothers me that Winter God did not take Comet. Yeah. It's just too easy to proc on Misfortune. Agreed. Yeah, that. I don't know. These, these people have interesting choices of. Uh, <laughs> Keystones. So. Interesting, but let's see if they're actually fruitful this time around. Well, I really want to see by the end of this game if Doki can change his summoner spell. Period. Just change it for me, and would be great. Yeah. Now we're gonna get past. We're gonna get the stun off. Forced to take E first, which is a little weird one. I guess. I guess if you're afraid of the aggression, you would just take E first. But you already have the. Uh, Corrupting Potion. Man, it... Uh, almost an early deficit into a Netflix and Chill being 4. Uh, 7 and 2 now. And against the CS from One True God. We're gonna have to use the Piercing Arrow just to try to get far, but the Zeal like lands onto One True God in the back line. Going to throw out, going to comments, going to land on the back side. Ignite goes out, but it's not gonna be enough to actually secure him to kill. Hook comes out, takes Steely Dan, gonna get the make it rain, gonna proc the airy. But again, Comet would have been a little bit better, not that it would return to kill there. But yeah. good trades coming out of the bot lane, and it looks like Jake are gonna take the worst half of that as taking another piercing arrow in Comet. Yeah, Netflix still pretty much full health from that fight. Nidalee looking possibly to gank top here. He hasn't seen yet. The spear lands onto Aragorn. Go and actually throw it out. Chong actually lands! But he's gonna flash away and not gonna actually land the Q. Did not Q that up in time. So, Aragorn's gonna just walk away. Only burning flash. Not bad. If they can make a repeat gank as the moment as Aragorn goes in for another dive, that's what I want to see. I want to see Mario Nick make that repeat gank as opposed to last game where he just never returned until the summoner spells were back up. Yeah, Nidalee warding the blue buffs. Are Nidalee and Shen are looking to kind of contest this blue buff here. They want it, but they know Doki's there. Do they step into the brush? I don't think they did. Oh, no. Doki shows himself. He's going to get the charm landing on the PK. Going to actually getting the tangle onto him. I can't see anything in the back of the death fight. And the comment, and the heal saves himself with the first blood going over to Netflix and chill. While well, we have Artemis on the bot lane just trying to chase up and kill Silly Dan, they are Nemesis Zeno Blade. going to barely miss. Whew. This is a clown and no one of dies in the top again. lane is the most bothering part. Taunt lands onto Aragon, but gonna charm misses, but the Tangle does not miss that flash. I mean, that's your death, Mario Nuke. Squishy is so low. Aragon just in wanting here. to go into the fight, does not care. Going to take a lot of damage. Going to try to rely on press the attack to kill. Yeah, but Jillian might be backing off from this fight just now. Yeah, very, very interesting kind of clown fiesta going on top while bot lane was fighting. Um, Mario aggressively jumping in onto the oh, Ari. Okay, you're in the wrong place. Going to have to wait out the dodge zone. And not going to try to go back. Doesn't have flash up just yet. Just going to wait for him to see if he wants to stick around. And if he sticks around too long, she's going to get dashed right up on him. I don't think he can escape after that point. Yeah, there it is, and there's the zero out. You should not have stayed. Pika, what are you doing? Charm landing on to Julian. Taking about half his health, gonna return one little speck of damage back. Not enough to <laughs> call that one worth. 
has a level, half a level advantage over Squishy Fishy, though. It's going to make it so good whenever, uh, if the level 5 to 6 difference between Zed and Ari is so strong just because you can't just ult right out of your zone after you uh, death marker. Yeah. So if he can go in for a kill at that point, but we have Mario Nuke just coming in on the backside here. Wants to try to get some damage, but missing every spirit, you're going to have to throw auto attacks, and it's just a battle of the auto attacks coming out. We'll have Doki coming in from the bottom of that river. Not going to return anything on that side. <coughs> Double up, landing some poke on a Steely Dan. But yeah, after Nidalee Mr. After Nidalee Mr. Spear, um, Squishy was kind of just playing with her, waiting to see Ooh, if we she would... Ooh, we have Erica just this. coming from the back side of this tower. <laughs> Julie didn't expect a thing! What happened? <laughs> just walks right back out. He still had flash up, guys. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, Squishy knew a movement was near. Um, kind of waiting to see if Nidalee would jump in a little more on her. Yeah. Uh, just started with the greed up in the top lane from Pika to staying there when he knew mm -hmm. in a couple seconds. Arrogance uh, cooldowns will be back up, and that's just a zeroed out for him. He'd just be slowed. But the bad gank also coming out from Mario Nuke, not securing himself onto that spear. Once that spear doesn't land, you might as well just leave. Ari's there, almost level six. Going to actually get the stun off on the PK. Not going to go down anymore. Almost out of mana here. Not going to be able to take these fights past that point. Mario Nuke. Having you smite, almost signed a blue buff. Will he make it? Kiting it out. It's down to 55 health, and he yeah. gets the blue buff. Mario Nuke, good for you. This is the best thing you've done all game. Walking around that peak where it finally sees it. It's been there for a good moment. Deathmark just signs for one true god. Is the perfect target, as he will be this entire series. Yeah. Like you said earlier, that's pretty much Zed's target this game. Getting onto the Misfortune with the ult, being able to just pop her because she has no way to get away from it. No Zanya is going to be able to be built. Um, Mario Nuke not surviving in this jungle whatsoever. This might not quite back up either. Just kind of run away from red buff. Oh, we have Aragon just taking down PK. And just... 1v1! Pika not respecting the damage. Once she has the Sheen, you really have nothing left. If you don't have your dodge out or taunt to get away, just run! You have nothing left to do. Mario Nuke coming back for the red buff, throwing out the smite. I think he's gonna heal him enough. He might just die to the next auto attack, and it's an execute! Kill going over to red buff. Yeah. So Bramble back. Red buff, Bramble one back. kill this game. Uh, one kill this game uh, so far for the season. So... <laughs> Got to get that tally, get that tally going. How many, how many kills <laughs> Red Buff gets? Uh, it feels bad when your jungle Ned can't take the buffs. Just is so far under, and that's putting him even more XP down. It just feels really bad. Yeah. Charm landing on a Julian, taking out almost just 150 health. Doesn't want to commit the ult just yet. We're going to taking a tower shot, but I don't think Pika has any more threat left in this top lane. He's dropped 10 CS in the past couple minutes, and I don't think it's getting any better from there. After he knows he's lost that back top lane, you have to, like, press your bot lane, uh, get that tower, and then force a lane swap. Charm landing onto Julian. Sandy and I coming in to save his life. Stun coming out from Sailly Dam, but not going to get up. It's Tom Lance on a Squishy Fishy, but he's just going to keep dashing away. So I think as you do, he hasn't even blown Flash yet. He sees the Julian wants to get it up, but the Death Mark comes out. You might have buried it a little bit too soon. Death Mark kills Squishy Fishy on the backside. Yeah. Ah, uh, the immediate barrier. Why? You get scared, and why? Yeah, bear, especially if you're that far away where no more damage is going to come out onto you, the barrier isn't preventing that. You tried, damage. but now that's a level 8 Aurelia coming at you. You already won half health with one Q. Run! That's all you can do, Mario Nuke. Run! And that's first tower going over to Aragon in the top lane. Just ridiculous. And the flash! What was that? 
Ultimate, you didn't even hit a minion. You just did nothing. <laughs> At least wait for Skilly Dan to Xenoblade in and get a secured ultimate coming out. But no, and now it looks like Pikachu might be zeroed out once again. Charging him past the mini line, doesn't care whatsoever. The ultimate coming up for Aragon, going to have to try to toss away and gets the taunt just enough to save his life as he goes away. Silly Dan sitting there, baiting in, taking that pink war. Nothing else can save him. One true god is going to go down too. Nope, Silly Dan backs off. I feel like he could have stayed. Not enough confidence there, buddy. Yeah, that really is really, really strong right now. Shen. He does have a brand but he still can't he still can't go into that lane without getting pretty much instantly chunked out. And the Nidal and what's unfortunate for them is the Nidalee is so far behind as well, and the Zed's not winning lane. Zed's down a pretty decent amount of CS right now, and he can't shove that wave in to help roam up and stop that Irelia, because honestly at this point they'd need probably three people to stop her. Two wouldn't be enough unless they play it perfectly, which uh, I don't think anything's going to be played perfectly in this game. No, but he's actually doing what he needs to. Uh, well, he was before I spoke. Split pushing and taking it down to that tier two, knowing that they're not sending anyone else up there. And it looks like Joey has caught on the wrong side of the bush, gets the charm to the face, gets the ultimate on. I don't think he's going anywhere from that. Mario just throwing out the spear, doing what he can. He's only level six. Give him a break. <laughs> and that spear went through Artemis, I feel like. Oh, coming down, Artemis, you nuke. It's not going to be able to do much. Throwing out the charm misses as well. Sun landing on Z Squishy Pitchy. And throwing backside, and Joki's caught on the wrong side of the tower. He takes a couple extra tower shots. Actually, he might just walk away. One, like, five health he has. Where is he going? It's right around 20 HP he got away with. Very, TP very coming close. up from Shen onto the mid lane. Trying to try to stop Aragon from taking that mid tower, although I don't think he can. He's going to come and sit there and watch from a better view. And Netflix chill your car on the wrong side, gets exhausted up. Bullet time coming out as well. Well, we have another taking Ooh. up the tower damage. And you are deleted, sir. That might have been overkill, but too bad. And half health coming out from Aragorn with a single Q. Not enough to get the steady nine. Toss over tower, but doesn't actually quite get the damage. The death mark might be enough. Yes, it will. Aragorn goes down to the back end. Yep, there's the Aragon. three people plus the tower dive. His name is Aragorn. He's going to get so mad at me later. <laughs> Mario, you've been in this situation before. Let Julia tank the tower or tank this blue buff. You can't handle it. <laughs> Please you walk away. Executed again. Blue buff is still alive. He just left it. Mm. He actually couldn't take yeah. it. I think they decided. Three v three on the bot lane, here. trying to throw out a Q. Not actually going to get anything out. Bullet. Got to get a few damage off onto Julian, but TP coming in for. Oh, the stunned Xenoblade and the solo kill jump, on yeah. his mortal enemy. Artemis goes down to Steely Dan. Just really nothing left to do. <laughs> from Artemis there, he decided to walk past the bush that they had no vision in. And when they knew they were around bot side there, and he was such low health, I'm pretty sure anyone would have been able to kill him. Arigen, please go back to the top lane and finish out your split push. I would much appreciate it. Why we keep biting 5v5 in the bot side of this jungle? We're not even taking the dragon, which someone could be doing that instead of blue buff. It's an infernal drink. Please take it. Yeah. I think also, he likes down on Squishy Fishy, but Steely Dan just wants the blood. Someone, please return to lanes. Return to your CSing fashion is what you really need to do at this point. But Aragon coming on the backside, going to get Netflix to chill, throwing him down half health, oh. and that should be instantly deleted. Can't even get to your farm in time. And Mario Nuke gets nuked himself. Deathmark coming down on to Pika, but then he's ready to tell Target, you want me? Double kill coming out for one true god. Nothing else you can really do. Steal it, Dan. Just zone and get down on the backside. Squish Page is doing a cam. Get, throws out the barrier. Pika just caught on the wrong side of this. Double up's not quite enough shield. The shield's coming out, but the ultimate coming out from Artemis is going to secure the kill. Saving Squishy Bushy, being the ultimate bait that you can be. Yeah, that was really, really well played from. Uh... Leona did a pretty good job. She was able to get on the This is stopper. not the fight you want. <laughs> yeah. And he just goes on to Steely Dan's fight. just delayed it up. Nope. I'll win more attack, please. Thank you. <laughs> on that backside. 
Wow, this guy is a beast. Is indeed. I don't even know how to handle it. He's been dominating these top lane matchups so well. And against the Shin that is still falling so far behind the CS, hasn't completed an item, and isn't even getting to a lane where he can get any farm whatsoever. And the miss click on Aragon there. Not able to click over to get Netflix and chill. Didn't secure the kill from the wolf. But at least we have top tower it is being pressured in by a huge mini by favoring daycare here. But we have next one chill going down. Ultimate might be coming up from Doki. No, he's still on cooldown. Dragonfly goes over to Artemis. Securing himself a dragon for his team. Charm landing onto Mario Nuke, but he gets nuked in the process. Netflix Chill running away with the standing nine, but Argon, do something. Shut down coming out for Netflix and Chill, getting some auto text on, but the charm lands onto him. He's gone to the box. Ton landing onto the back side of one true god. Gonna try to take him out, Steely Dan's gonna try to charge on him, just ignoring all those squishy fishy. Bullet time coming out, not quite enough to take out PK, but Pika on the backside, gonna get some damage out, finally takes the kill. Xenoblade coming back down onto one true god. Let's see if he's gonna kill double kill coming out for Squishy Fishy. That was very, very well played on the side of uh, Daycare there. They they were able to kind of keep the Shen and Leona from sticking on the one target. Um, so they were able to kind of have the one carry versus one. Oh my goodness, that misfortune Q damage. They were able to keep <laughs> one carry per one tank and then keep kiting them back and forth and then finally able to gang up on one when they got them low enough so the two tanks weren't able to just lock down a carry, kill them, and then switch to the next. So that was very well played on the sides of One True God and Squishy Fishy there. I so like they're just going to pressure that lead. I feel like 7k just don't actually have Zeal, but he actually lands onto one true guard in the back lane. But it's just him fighting what he can. Charm landing onto Netflix and Chill, taking three quarters of his health, throwing out a piercing arrow, gonna miss. Well, Mario New gets solo killed. Not really, but <laughs> just takes him out of the back lane. He might as well have solo killed. Dust Blade being completed from Ar for Aurelia is just too much to handle. <laughs> Pika, you just need to run. Stop going to lane. Go back to base. <laughs> well, you took the express route back to base, that is. Charm landing on to Steely Dan in the back line, but he's not afraid to come at you anyway, so no point there. And yeah. I have yet to see Zed make an impression into this mid lane whatsoever. He has three Taking kills. Taking that bot turret. They're actually starting to pull apart 7k, being able to pressure these objectives where these can't, and definitely still can't even cross the lane, but the flash and the dash coming out from Aragon just takes the kill in. Mario, where do you think you're going? Bullet time landing on Steely Dan, but it doesn't actually do that much oh. damage. Gets, oh, one true god being taken out by the tower. Solo kill coming out on Steely Dan, the one true carrier of this team. Now we have Artemis caught under the tower. Going out the ultimate. This hands are coming out from Doki. Going to try to get as much damage as can, but the dash coming out from Squishy Fishy is what secures the double kill. And that's an ace, and just take out the towers. Aurelia's already got himself away from the bot lane, and they're just going to press up, and nothing that 7k can do. Yeah, 7k, they just are getting out team fought every fight pretty much. They can't stick together or else they're just going to get wombo comboed, but then they can't split up or else the squishies are just going to get dove on by the Irelia, by the Ari, like we saw, or by the Nautilus even, like we saw in that team fight. Nautilus went pretty hard under that mid tower. Um, so they really need to just try to get some word control this isn't your blue buff this jungle. isn't your jungle mario <laughs> he's gonna sit there and say the damage with the ultimate coming out from necklace and this and united gonna finally secure himself a kill mario does something impressive in the game gets one kill and now one seven and three an impressive score to say the least for mario nuke yeah, I was going to say, they need to get some ward control, maybe get some picks in their own jungle, try to shut down some people, and that's exactly what they did there, actually. Got a pick on the Aurelia. They did trade the Rift Herald for it, though. Um, and they're... If, if I was on the side of um, Daycare, I would drop... Go to top, either top and push two towers with that, or drop it bottom with somebody split pushing there and then take baron but 
Uh, Ooh, I don't know. Spirit how Land's always go fishy. I can't help if, like, if Mario was where he needed to be, that spear would have been devastating. But it's just not. He's one in seven and doesn't have any gold to his name. Barely has completed his jungle item. But we have the ZZ Rod coming back out for a Mumu. Hook goes wide as the shadow is able to just escape. Yeah, Mario needs to be careful here. He can get picked super easily if he gets too close to the Aria, the Nautilus. If he gets too close to Nautilus, I feel like Nautilus has enough power to save the day. Secure the kill there. Uh, just Zed, where'd you go, buddy? Oh my god. <laughs> Death Mark is really nothing if you the... can't even ult. Oh. She's got the Trinity Force, Dusk Blade, and Yomu. She's just gonna be one shotting. Pretty uh, the much. Stuck coming up, Zed, like landing on two, squishing face. That's the only one you're gonna have to secure down. Nautilus taking up the front line. Nothing else can do. Bullet time landing on just for the shit. Might have just. Chose the wrong place for that hook going wide on the backside. The ultimate coming down from Artemis and the ultimate coming out from Doki. The tantrum being enough to secure the kills. <laughs> really just tearing apart the game that no one else can stand for it. Julian, you're back in to the fight and you actually get a kill on the backside that was relatively clean. Run back to the fountain and watch as your Nexus dies. Because Aurelius is going to delete you once again. Q, auto, auto, and you're gone. Dying under Fountain, oh please go and die the Fountain for that kill. Harold being finally down. dropped, and that's it. That's the game. Game, well, the series one of Rampage Winter Split going over to daycare. Feels very well played. Uh, just so much coming out from them. That. Top lane, or Aragon, Aragon, Aerogen, maybe, I don't know, but just did so much in those that team. I feel like he should be the MVP of this entire series. He dominated the top lane absolutely devastatingly, and he was pretty much the solo carry for the rest of the game. Oh my goodness. I feel like I should bring him in and we should have a talk with him if he's in our chat. And see how he feels about the game. Someone, help. Get him in. Help me. He's not here. Well, let's see. Well, anyway. Uh, I Again, I feel like Pika's pick was just too lackluster. There's just nothing else he could really do. He didn't perform it on the first time. I'm not sure why he picked it the second time. As well as Mario Nuke, even at least picked two different champions, but he lost out to a spellbook jungle with TP and Smite that never changed it, ever. Whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out for him, though, both games. They were able to... He did end up buying the ZZ Rot, so... It's easy to drop both games, and with that rune, I feel like that's actually not a bad buy. Alright. Do we have Aerogen in our chats that we can talk to? Is he going to come to the Arisen Discord? If he goes to viewing, we can take him in. Yeah, let's see if we can get him in here. I'm sorry, Mario Nuke. That was a rough game. But, nevertheless, it was still a good game. It's just the first game of the season, guys. We're going to have a lot more coming after that. And, oh yeah, I'd, it doesn't look like we're going to get our MVP of the series here. But, thank you guys for joining us here at Risen Esports, watching our first game of Ranch Page Winner Split. I am Joshua Nesra Freeman, and join with me was Owen Rosin. Say your last name. Shirt. There we go. That's who joined. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys and have a good night.